ah, oh, God, it's just gross. It's ew. It's like, dude, emo boys are not back in. Just stop. I read fantasy that's more believable than this bullshit. Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Allie. And today, Hook, Line, and Sinker comes out by Tessa Bailey. I am so excited. Um, this is obviously one of my most anticipated releases of 2022. It is the second book in the Bellinger Sister series, the first of which was It Happened One Summer. Now this was explained to everyone as a Schitt's Creek romance story. Um, and I very much find that Piper is a great doppelganger for Alexis. The first one revolves around Piper, who is very um, seemingly outgoing and bubbly and girly and also insecure at the same time. Um, and we also meet, I believe, Hannah, who's a sister and the main character of this book. In the first book, we also find out that Hannah works in the movie, the film industry. Oh, that sounds like porn, but it's not. <laughs> um, and she has a crush on the director or something like that. And I think he's either totally oblivious or not interested. And in the first book, we also meet Fox, who is the best friend to the hero in the first story. And by the end of the first book, you can tell he's very smitten with Hannah. All of that was from the first book. Now the description on the second book is as such. Hannah is back in the little fisherman town and she's staying with Fox at his place because they're friends. Meanwhile, she's still pining over this love. What's his name? Like Sebastian or something like that. And Fox decides to kind of help train her to flirt with him or something like that. Meanwhile, he's obviously head over heels for her. So it's gonna be them coming close together, you know, forced proximity, some building tension. I'm guessing Fox is gonna figure out that though he is identified himself and other people identify him as a player, he's gonna figure out, you know, what he really wants. I think the thing I'm most looking forward to is Hannah as a character herself, just because Piper, her sister and the, the main character of the first book was so specifically Piper. She wasn't like a lot of other romance heroines. She wasn't like the other girls. So I'm interested to see how Tessa Bailey builds Hannah's character and um, develops her throughout this book. But even, I don't really know that much about Hannah except for that she's a good sister. All right, let's start reading. Hello, it's the next day. I didn't really uh, read more than a few pages yesterday because we went grocery shopping, had dinner, yada, yada, yada. In the first few pages though, we see Hannah in her element. She's like a production assistant in Los Angeles. And we see her crush on Sergey, not Sebastian. And she describes him so, he's so obnoxious, like just obnoxious. Have you, if you guys watch Friends, you know that episode where Joey's in a play and there's a director and he's kind of crazy? That's what Sergey sounds like. And so she finishes describing this and then she says, that's exactly why I like him. And it's just like, ooh, that might be a red flag on your part, Hannah. Anyway, I'm very excited to read more today. Let's get to it. Okay, I am 25% in and I have some thoughts. Um, I mean, this is pretty cheesy. <laughs> I should have been expecting that because every other Tessa Bailey book has been pretty cheesy in the alpha male kind of way. I've remembered it happened one summer with such like, warmth and happiness but when i went and looked back just now on goodreads i only gave that a three star i do remember it being kind of cheesy i mean the the hot scenes were very spicy the thing that really stood apart in that one was specifically piper's character uh who i thought was very different to what we usually read in romance novels so my thoughts on this one so far at the 25 percent mark so far, it's not as strong as it happened one summer, mostly because we are trying to force this romance between Hannah and Fox as in they're already best friends. When in fact, in the last book, they only hung out with each other for one afternoon and Fox was in love with her, <laughs> which, you know, could happen if you're like 12. So I guess we're, we're made to believe that their friendship has grown stronger over the six months that in between these books. And we get a little snippet of how their texting relationship gets a little stronger. So I'm gonna let that go. I'm gonna pretend they're best friends. Let's just move on. I don't love the trope 
of the love triangle. It's not even a true triangle because then that would be like a throuple situation. Especially in books where there's two point of views and a romance novel, you know those two are gonna end up together. So why even have a third person? It's a waste of time because Fox already likes Hannah. You don't need to make him jealous. I don't know. The whole jealousy thing is already getting a little irritating, but then I have to remember that Tessa Bailey, her strength is in the alpha male, which is frustrating just in general. Um, so again, I just need to accept that and move on with the story. Then we have this weird, I guess it's like a trope of forbidden romance. So Brendan, who was the hero in the first story is sort of acting as Hannah's older brother and saying like, Fox, you can't, you can't hit on Hannah. You can't hook up with her. When it's like, dude, you've known this girl for six months and you're all adults. What are you doing? And then the final thing that's just like a little irritating is that Fox's whole character arc in this story is going to be him accepting himself. And the thing that's it's funny to me, which I'm sorry if this is offensive in any way, is that his struggle is that he's had too much sex. <laughs> um, I understand that they're trying to come across as um, people are judging him and objectifying him for being <laughs> a player. <laughs> Why do I think this is so funny? This could be legit. Um, most of the time it's obviously bad for the woman in a situation like this. You know, there is a double standard for women, which is the funny part because there's not really a double standard for men. It's not something that like people would look down on you at. Also the fact that this is the first friendship he's had with a single woman. Yeah. My frustrations and silliness aside, I am going to continue this book. It's not bad. I like Hannah. I'm not I'm, like, I'm not, holding her so super close to my heart. She does remind me a little bit of Lexi's story in Euphoria right now, if you guys watch that, because she's talking about becoming the main character and not the sidekick. So yeah, I am now going past trying to take this too seriously and I'm just gonna have fun with it. Okay, so there's just been a scene where some old men are like making fun of and laughing at Fox for being a tomcat. <laughs> And I feel bad for laughing in that last clip and for laughing now a little bit because, you know, it's obviously hurting Fox for people to judge him and belittle him in this way, like that he's only one kind of guy. I don't know what it is that I just can't have too much like real sympathy for him. Of course I'm sympathetic, but it's also at the same time, nobody would like behave like that. I, I don't feel like. Like, why would anyone care about his sexual nature or exploits? And also, he's made it a point to only hook up with people in different cities so that, you know, no one would know his business. So then why did they know his business? And at the same time, why does Fox give them so much control over him? I guess that's a lesson maybe that he needs to learn, but... <sighs> yeah. I just don't want to come off as like insensitive to this subject because it's like, oh, this man feels womanized, but like manized. But it's also a woman writing the book. Maybe it's just because I come from a place called Florida. <laughs> oh God. Where people are just doing sketchy shit all the time and no one's really that judgmental. And, or maybe I'm just an adult. I don't know. This man is 30 years old. Who cares how much sex he's having? Okay, I think I've said my piece. The sexual tension is 100 emoji with the fire emoji. Okay, so this escalated from Fox being self-conscious about other people thinking he's a tomcat um, to him using sex to avoid intimacy and avoid, I don't know, liking himself. So it's a little more complicated than I initially thought. And I like how Hannah is handling it. Okay, it is the next day. I just went on a huge rant about why I'm DNFing this book. It got a little feisty, so I, I'm gonna try to film it again. I am 65% of the way through and I just don't think this is the book for me. I'm having a hard time with Fox's character. Now, I don't wanna come off as insensitive, so I'm just gonna make it very clear that I understand that hypersexuality due to childhood trauma is a thing. I understand that we all tell each other lies and that it takes a lot of work to get through self-fulfilling prophecies like Fox needs to do. 
Like, yeah, I think it's totally unfair, not to mention a little ridiculous that the townspeople would shame him for being hypersexual. However, he tells them all about his exploits and he laughs at it. And I understand that is a problem, that he's feeding into this identity that he has been pushed on him and that he is feeding into. Um, so yeah, I get it. However, it's now becoming a part of Hannah's story that she needs to fix Fox, that she needs to be the one to teach him how to be in a healthy relationship, to teach him how to be a healthy adult. And I think that's absolutely ridiculous, especially because Fox is snapping at her and trying to get her to like back off by lashing out. And she's like, no, I'm gonna prove it to him that he can do this by just kissing him and telling him that it's okay. That's a toxic relationship. I can't do it, I can't do it. The fact that so far at 65% that that is the answer, that Hannah has to fix him. I, I'm not, I don't wanna read about that. And honestly, I know it sounds very judgmental and I can be kind of judgy toward characters' trauma because authors are purposely, especially lately, over-traumatizing characters just to give them some sort of depth. And I think that's bullshit, first of all, that that's a whole nother story. And obviously, if this were a real story, and obviously if there was someone dealing with these issues, I'd be very sympathetic and empathetic. The fact is that an author wrote this. And that the fact is that this character, this fictional character is whiny. The reason that these two people who obviously like and are attracted to each other can't get together is because he's so damaged. That's not an interesting story. And I think it is childish and immature. He's 31 years old. It's just some of the comments he makes, oh, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but something has happened in his past to make him feel even more so like he's a bad guy. And it's literally the opposite of that. And there's no way that anyone would take that situation. Again, talking fictionally, obviously I'm sure this has happened to some people and I don't mean to be rude, but no one would take that and use that as evidence for why they're a bad person. It just does not compute. Also, he wears a bracelet to remind himself that he's just like his father and he always will be. Come on. Like if I met a guy that was like that and so openly hated himself so much and like bragged about it, ah, oh God, it's just gross, it's ew. It's like, dude, emo boys are not back in, just stop. And now at the 65% mark, he's acting super territorial and creepy in an unhealthy kind of way that like Hannah can't even walk into the same room as another guy without him like wanting to piss all, in a circle all around her. I just, I don't, this isn't fun and this isn't romantic. And I know that Tessa Bailey writes alpha males, so I should have known a little bit coming in, but I just don't really care to finish this right now. I also think it's completely ridiculous that toxic masculinity is to blame for how Fox has been put into this box his whole life. And that's valid. That's a discussion that I think we should all have. But at the same time, there's still toxic masculinity in Fox's behavior that's being glamorized, like his hyper jealousy. And I feel like a lot of romance that I've read in the past year, yeah, I've read some trash romance and I've read some guilty pleasure romance and just fun romance that is ridiculous. But I've also read a lot of romance novels that are really genuine and are really heartfelt and I feel like they could happen. And it's not that I need a sense of reality in everything that I read. I read fantasy that's more believable than this bullshit. <laughs> I don't feel... Like this is a strong book. And again, some of this might just be my personal past and my trauma. Obviously it's just my opinion, but um, yeah, I don't think I can read this. I mean, I could force myself to finish it. I might just do that, but not right now. I'm just annoyed. I'm like, why am I so annoyed? I think I am so annoyed because I was really looking forward to this book, um, which is ridiculous because I've read about five Tessa Bailey books and I've only liked one of them. So I should not have had my hopes so high. Anyway, unless I update again, this is gonna be the DNF. Maybe at some point I'll finish it when I'm in a, a much lighter, able to deal with bullshit kind of mood. But at this moment, no, not gonna do it. Okay, I finished the damn book. <laughs> I feel a little silly for being so agitated and salty earlier. Now I'm just in a like, oh, okay, this is silly kind of mood. So there's probably gonna be spoilers 
in the rest of this. I'll try to be vague though. So there's a third act conflict where they are separated, of course, and in the span of one conversation in one night, he learns all of his lessons that I talked about in the beginning of this. He learns all of these lessons in one night and they live happily ever after. And then <laughs> we get an epilogue 10 years into the future. Um, I'm personally not a fan of epilogues. This one just felt kind of just awkward. I don't know. I just don't really care about, like there were definitely cute parts to this um, mixed in with, you know, cringe and also toxicity and just a little bit of ridiculousness. Bottom line, I didn't really like this book. I, I think I'm gonna give it two stars, which breaks my damn heart. I will read another Tessa Bailey book. I will not have my hopes as high. I think my biggest hope going into this was that I would really like Hannah's character, and I do. I really like Hannah. I think she's a great girl. I like her career path. I like that she grew confident in herself and in her abilities, and I like where she ended up with because I do know that Fox loves the hell out of her good for her, but at the same time, I kind of want more for her. Okay, one more thought as I'm editing this. Um, the fact that Hannah's whole plot line is that she's not gonna be a side character. <laughs> the irony of that, because she was a side character to her love interest for this entire book, and sadly, this entire review of the book. I mean, it's not her fault that she's uncomplicated. Okay, this has gone on long enough. <laughs> I will see you guys in the next video. If you read this book, even if you agree with me or not, please let me know your thoughts below because um, I'm just always curious. And I feel like after a week or so, I start remembering a book differently. Either I remember it better or I remember it even worse. So I'm interested to see how my thoughts develop on this book as well. All right, goodbye. <laughs>